Shalom and welcome to everyone, my brothers and sisters all around the world, of every color, and every person watching. I thank you so much, and every background. I always appreciate you, and appreciate your time. What are Karite Jews of Judah, the Israelites? This is a name that was placed upon us by Jews who refused to follow the ways of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were a sect that believed that there was two revelations at Mount Sinai. There was the written Torah, which is the commandments, the five books of Moshe, and that there was an oral Torah translation based on an oral tradition that was passed on from sage to sage. Now we, as Karaim, Kara is the ancient form of saying Tanakh nowadays. Today is Tanakh, the Hebrew scriptures, the Torah, prophets, and writings. In the ancient Hebrew, Kara was the term used as we would use today, Tanakh. So it's like basically saying in modern English, Tanakhites. We believe solely in the scripture of the Hebrew text and nothing else. We do not believe that the Talmud, the Mishnah, the Kabbalah, or any of those things are the inspired words of Elohim. Now before I go on, I do want to say for my Orthodox brothers and sisters, this video is in no way, not one bit, in any way meant to insult or to disrespect your tradition and your heritage whatsoever. And I care and love you, and this is in no way at all meant in a negative way towards anyone of Orthodox uh, way of life. My simple meaning for making this video is one thing, and I hope you hear those who may be Orthodox or considering Orthodox Judaism. My only sole purpose for this video is to present a case based on Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures alone, that the Torah, our belief, based on the Scriptures, was written and not based on two revelations, but one, the written and written alone. This is our presentation and our response in question. So there were always Jews throughout history of Israel, many Israelite sects, who did not believe in adopting this notion of a second Torah, that what ended up being, in general, the Mishnah, the Talmud, and everything else that came afterwards. We believe solely in the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, that being said, let's get right to it. Let's get to the Scriptures. Let's begin. I hope you enjoy. We're going to start with Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 27, verses 3 and 8, where it says there, And inscribe upon them all the words of this Torah. And on those stones you shall inscribe every word of this Torah most clearly, very clearly. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 58 through 61, it says, If you fail to observe faithfully all the terms of this Torah, which are written in this scroll, to reverence this honored and awesome name, Yehovah your Elohim, Yehovah will inflict extraordinary plagues upon you and your offspring, strange and lasting plagues, malignant and chronic diseases. He will bring back upon you all the sicknesses of Egypt that you dreaded so, and they shall cling to you. Moreover, Yehovah will bring upon you all other diseases and plagues that are mentioned or written, written in this scroll of Torah until you are wiped out. If there's always a righteous remnant, and we know who that remnant is, it's Judah. Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter 31, verse 9, verse 22, and verse 24. Moshe wrote down this Torah and gave it to the priests, sons of Levi, who carried the Ark of Jehovah's Covenant, and to all the elders of Israel. That day Moses wrote down, wrote down this poem and taught it to the Israelites. And he charged Yehoshua or Joshua, son of Nun, be strong and resolute. He was telling Joshua, 
For you shall bring the Israelites into the land that I promised them on oath, and I will be with you. When Moshe had put down in writing the words of this teaching to the very end. Again, constantly everything that was important at that time was written down. Think about it. Even God himself, the Ten Commandments, which we know without question, was written by the finger of Elohim. He himself did not deliver the Ten Commandments, the mitzvot, by word of mouth, but written, written down with his finger. So even his own testimony was written down. How much more so the imperfection of man. He knew what would happen with tradition, with such a claim. So I feel that by the end of this presentation, you will be convinced that God is yelling, yelling it out clearly that there was one Torah and not two. Let's keep going. Joshua chapter 1 verse 8. He says, let not this scroll of the Torah cease from your lips, but recite it day and night, so that you may observe faithfully all that is written in it. Only then will you prosper in your undertakings, and only then will you be successful. Joshua chapter 8 verse 31. As Moshe, the servant of Yehoah, had commanded the Israelites, as is written In the Torah, the book of the Torah of Moshe, an altar of unhewn stone which upon no iron has been wielded. They offered on it burnt offerings to Yehovah and brought sacrifices of well-being. Joshua chapter 8 verse 32. And there on the stones he inscribed a copy, a copy of the Torah that Moshe had written. For the Israelites. Now every time this comes up. I mention this in my other videos. And forgive me if it seems repetitive. But to those of you who are watching this for the first time. In many of my videos. I've stated before. That whenever this comes up. All that is written. Or you must write down this Torah. And etc etc. Every time something like this. Is in the Torah. Or in the Hebrew scriptures afterwards. It never ever is followed with the words, and then you will explain or teach the Oral Torah. For those of you who don't know, the Oral Torah is a way of saying the Talmudic teachings, the Mishnah, all of those. It never ever states it when saying clearly, explicitly, everything that was written down or read to the nation of Israel. And we'll see it continued here. Joshua chapter 8, verse 34. My absolute favorite. After that, he, Joshua, read all the words of the Torah, the blessing and the curse, just as it is written in the book of the Torah. There was not a word of all, all that Yehovah had commanded that Yehoshua or Joshua did not read to the entire nation, the men, the women, and the children. I'm going to read this one more time. It's very important. Listen to every word. After that, Joshua read all the words. This is in Joshua chapter 8, verse 34. All the words of the Torah, the blessing and the curse, just as it is written in the book of of the Torah, or the scroll of the Torah, there was not a word of all that Yehoah had commanded that Yehoshua did not read. Joshua chapter 18, verse 6. When you have written, 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 when you have written down the description of the land in seven parts, again, it's supposed to be written down in seven parts, Bring it here to me. Then I will cast lots before you, before Yehovah Elohim. 
Joshua chapter 23, verse 6. But be most resolute to observe faithfully all that is written in the Torah, the scroll of Moshe, without ever deviating from it to the right or to the left. Very, very clear. And again, nothing follows that says, and then you shall teach or observe the oral traditions or the oral Torah, which will be explained to you later. Nothing of the sort. Now, this is the Karite response. Okay? It's not an attack. It's a response. Okay, 1 Kings. Now we're going to go forward in the Hebrew Scriptures. Because maybe, you know, maybe once the Torah, there's nothing else afterwards. Yes, there is. 1 Kings chapter 2, verse 3. When David's life was drawing to a close, he instructed his son Solomon as follows. I am going the way of all the earth. Be strong and show favor, or show yourself a man. Keep the charge of Yehovah Eloheinu. Walking in his ways and following his laws, his commandments, his rules, and his admonitions as recorded or written in the Torah of Moshe. In order that you may succeed in whatever you undertake and wherever you turn. 2 Kings chapter 14 verse 6. But he did not put to death the children of the assassins in accordance with what is written in the scroll of the Torah of Moshe. Period. What was written. Written, written. Again, nothing continues that. Nothing follows about the oral Torah. Zero. Nothing. 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 13. Go inquire of Yehoah on my behalf and on behalf of the people, on behalf of Judah. He goes on to say, For great indeed must be the wrath of Yehoah that has been kindled against us because of our fathers. They did not obey the words of this scroll to do all that has been written for us. Over and over and over. It's like beating a dead horse. Very clear, clear and consistent. Let's keep going. Second Kings chapter 23, verse 3. Then I'm going to read verse 21 and verse 24. This is in Second Kings chapter 23, verse 3, 21, 24. Please write these down. Starting with verse 3. The king stood, oh, excuse me, verse 2, I'm sorry. The king went up to the house of Yehoah together with all the men of Judah and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem and the priests and prophets, all the people young and old. And he read, read to them the entire text of the covenant scroll, which had been found in the house of Yehoah. Verse three, the king stood by the pillar and solemnized the covenant before Yehoah that they would follow Yehoah and observe his commandments, his injunctions, and his laws and all their with all their heart and all their soul that they would fulfill all the terms of this covenant as written as it is written upon the scroll and all the people entered into the covenant verse 21 the king commanded all the people offer the sacrifice the passover to yehovah your elohim as written as it is written in this scroll of the covenant. In verse 24, Josiah also did away with the necromancers and the mediums. He annihilated them. Idols and the fetishes. All the detestable things that were to be seen in the land of Judah and Jerusalem. Thus he fulfilled the terms of the Torah recorded in the scroll that the priest Hilkiah had found in the house of Yehoah. 1 Chronicles chapter 16, verse 40. To sacrifice burnt offerings to Yehoah on the altar of the burnt offering regularly, morning and evening, in accordance with what was written in the Torah of Yehoah with which he charged Israel. Written again and again. 
I can go on and on and on. I have other videos with much more text, but there's much more here. I had about 10 pages full of the same thing. It's just repetitive, replete, clear, and consistent. So this is just a briefing of why Karaites stand that the Torah was written and there was no oral Torah. We do not need the oral Torah to understand. Now I have videos to explain certain matters and differences and questions that may be asked by Orthodox Jews. And I will be making much more videos as well. But here is the biblical Karaite understanding in the Torah, in Tanakh, of why we stand by and always have been Israelites throughout history since the time of Moshe until today there has always been Israelites who have kept the covenant of Yehovah free from the Talmudic teachings and traditions and strictly stuck to the Hebrew scriptures alone. Shalom.